The situation in Ukraine is extremely critical. The negotiations between the parties concerned, Russia, the United States and NATO held in Geneva, Brussels and Vienna, have not reached any agreement. Observers say that uh, there is still a diplomatic window to resolve the dispute, but alongside this hope there is a danger that at any moment the Russians will invade Ukraine with all the foreseeable consequences for peace in Europe and in the world. Tomorrow a crucial meeting will take place between US Secretary of State Antony Blinken and his Russian counterpart Lavrov in Geneva in an attempt to resolve the impasse. A week ago in the Basilica of Santa Maria degli Angeli in Rome, the funeral took place of David Sassoli, President of the European Parliament, who died after an illness at the age of 65. The former television journalist leaves a memory of great dedication among those who knew him, Irish Prime Minister Michael Martin, said he was deeply saddened to learn of the death of David Sassoli, a very committed European who leaves a significant legacy in his presidency of the European Parliament. His passion and leadership in promoting and defending European values will be greatly missed. On its 10th anniversary this month, we remember the disaster of the Italian cruise ship Costa Concordia in the Tyrrhenian Sea. On January 13, 2012, the ship, after hitting an underwater rock, capsized and sank in shallow waters off the island of Giglio in Tuscany. 34 people died in a tragedy, 27 passengers, 5 crew members and 2 rescue officers. In 2015, Francesco Schettino, commander of the ship, was sentenced to 16 years in prison for his role in the incident. Hard times for the UK. Between the scandal of the office party in full lockdown in 2020, in which Prime Minister Boris Johnson was involved, and the humiliation of Prince Andrew of the British Royal House, the United Kingdom is experiencing moments of great political diplomatic trepidation. Pending an independent investigation aimed at ascertaining the details of a gathering of politicians in the garden of his official residence at Ted Downing Street on May the 20th, 2020, in which he would have participated at a time when stringent lockdown rules were in force, Boris Johnson has activated a revolt even among the ranks of his Conservative Party that already demand his resignation. Quite critical is the affair concerning Prince Andrew of the British Royal House, who has been sued in court in America to respond to the accusations made against him by Virginia Giuffre, who accused him of sexual exploitation when she was 17 years of age. Giuffre was one of the many underage girls at the time hired by the infamous American financier Jeffrey Epstein, known for having ensnared many minors for sexual pleasures, offered to his close friends, including, apparently, Prince Andrew. Epstein committed suicide on August 10, 2019, in prison, where he was awaiting trial on charges of sex trafficking. Prince Andrew, in a well-known interview granted to the BBC, denied Giuffre's accusations limiting himself to confirming that he was only a friend of Epstein. After the lawsuit brought by the girl against him, the lawyers assisting him filed an injunction to exempt him from his testimony in the American court, but failed to do so. The prince, who in the meantime has been stripped off of all his royal titles and commitments by order of Queen Elizabeth, has only three options left, all three decidedly unpleasant and problematic. Either try to reach a compensation agreement with Giuffre, who, however, has made it known that she has no intention of pursuing, or ignore the subpoena with the consequent implication of the case, or go to America to testify in court to prove his alleged innocence. And now a bit of local news. Paolo Serpi, the Italian ambassador to Ireland, whose four-year term in office is drawing to a close, hosted a conference on Wednesday of Italian and European industrialists and bankers 
attended by top Irish transport specialists. The ambassador expressed concern about delays to Dublin's Metrolink rail line and has offered the assistance of the Italians to bring the project to fruition.